I'm so thankful I learned English as my mother language. Because when you learn a language at home, you learn by osmosis. Without even thinking about it, after three or four years, you're forming complex sentences, you're conjugating verbs correctly, you're using prepositions properly, you don't even think about it. And English is one of those very difficult languages that I'm glad I learned at my mother's knee. Learning a second language can be much more challenging. When I was in grade eight, I began to learn French and I loved French. But learning French at a high school in Vancouver with no one who was a natural French speaker, it didn't always go so well. I wrestled with grammar. I struggled to memorize vocabulary. Some of my teachers tried to teach me nice mnemonic devices like Mrs. Vandertramp to figure out which verbs were conjugated with avoir and which, which verbs were conjugated with etre, but it didn't really sink in too well. I loved French, but not living in a French-speaking environment, it has always been a struggle for me to speak it well. When you're fluent in a language, you don't even have to think about it. It just automatically flows from you. But when you're someone like me who has learned French mostly in school, mostly in areas where French isn't spoken firsthand, well, it's a little more difficult. When we went to Quebec and later to France, I would speak French and I did okay talking because when I spoke, I could speak very slowly and I could control the vocabulary I used so that I could express myself. But I couldn't understand the answers because the people responded very quickly and with words that I just didn't know. So it didn't work so well for me. One of the things my language teachers always impressed on me is, is that learning a language is more than just learning verbs and nouns and putting them all together properly. You're also learning a culture because the way people live in other countries is very different than the way we live as well. And so part of learning a language is also appreciating that the French culture is a beautiful, complex culture that's a bit different than ours as well. When we were going to France, I picked up a, a Rick Steves travel guide for France. And one of the comments he makes is this. We travel all the way to Europe to enjoy differences, to become temporary locals. You'll experience frustrations. Certain truths, and he's writing to an American audience, certain truths that as Americans we find God-given or self-evident, such as cold beer, ice in drinks, bottomless cups of coffees, coffee, hot showers, and bigger and better are suddenly not so true. One of the benefits of travel is the eye-opening realization that there are logical, civil, and even better alternatives. And so he goes on to talk about some of the beautiful things in French culture that are just a bit different than we may do things where we are. The idea of learning French is, is that French becomes just a natural part of your experience. It flows from you naturally. And this is also the aim of learning the new language of faith, of becoming a follower of Jesus. The ideal, of course, is that we all should have the new language of Christian belief and behavior written on our hearts so that when we face a new situation, we just naturally respond as Jesus would respond if he were in our position, because our belief in him, our faith in him, is so ingrained in our inner being. This is part of growing in faith and becoming more and more mature as followers of Jesus. But it doesn't happen naturally either. It doesn't just happen overnight. Like learning a new language and learning a new culture, learning to follow Jesus takes time. It takes teaching and learning. It takes being part of a community where that is lived out and expressed day by day. And it also means learning some of the rules of grammar, <laughs> memorizing some of those basic behaviors that come from following Jesus naturally in our lives. It takes hard work. 
and it does take time. It's something we grow into as we become more and more fluent in the language of faith. We become more and more part of the culture of those who seek to follow Jesus every moment of every day. The good news is that God's Spirit is at work in us, helping us in this process, helping us learn this new language of faith. And so Paul, in this passage, helps the Thessalonians think through how we can live as his Spirit informs, forms, and transforms us to be more and more like Jesus. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning at verse 12. The first way in which we grow as people of God, as people of faith, as people who live as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, is through teaching and leadership. I was fortunate in my French career to have some excellent French teachers who not only knew their subject, but were passionate about it. They loved French. They loved French culture. They would make us French food and bring us wonderful French cuisine. They modeled for us a passion for their subject, but they also cared about us as students as well. All of us need good teachers, whether we're learning French or we're learning how to follow Jesus in our daily lives. Paul encourages the Thessalonians in verse 12 to take note of those who work among you and exercise leadership over you in the Lord, those who give you instruction. In other words, pay attention to your teachers because they can help you in this process of growing to be followers of Jesus. The best teachers, of course, know their subject. They know what they're talking about. They're passionate about their students and they can communicate reasonably well anyway, although in this digital era, that's always an extra challenge for many of us. Some of these things are more challenging than others in these strange times. But we as staff here at First Baptist are still trying to teach the Bible faithfully. Some teachers love to teach their books or their videos or their own interpretation of things, but here we want to continue to go back to Scripture. That's why we love to have Scripture readings and to speak through the passages as we're preaching to you, because we want you to learn the Word of God. We want to be faithful in teaching the scriptures, and we're trying our best to make it engaging and interesting, even though that's a challenge for some of us. Preaching to one's phone is just a little bit weird compared to actually speaking with people in person. Lego seems to work really well. I'm not sure what that's all about, but you can talk to Mark about that. By the way, we, the, the pastoral staff here at the church, are also all committed to learning and continuing to grow ourselves as well. So most of us either have two or three books on the go, or we're taking courses, or we're watching videos, or finding other ways to keep lifelong learning as an important part of our growing so that we can teach you more effectively as well. And we do really, really, really care about you. One of the things I've noticed this time going through 1 Thessalonians is how often Paul talks about how I miss you and I long to be with you and I want to come and see you, but Satan barred the way. <laughs> it's kind of the way I feel. I always think of all of you kind of as my kids and I'm dad and I really want to just be with you and give you a great big hug, but that just isn't possible right now. And like Paul, I'm kind of frustrated and a little bit grumpy because I really, really do care about each of you as well. So, one of the ways that we grow as Christians is we need wise instruction. We need to listen to the Word of God. And so we're going to sing together Thy Word, which talks about the fact that God's Word can help us grow in our faith and become mature people who live with and for Jesus.